Angular plus Electron lets you do things that you'd never be able to do with Angular alone. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin. And in this episode of Demos with Angular, we're taking a look at Angular plus Electron. Today, we're going to be building out an application using a seed project instead of the CLI. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a controller for a IoT device that I just recently added to my home. So I bought this Elgato key light that lights up my desk in the area around where I'm taking videos. And the problem with it is there's a really great Windows app, there's a really great Mac app, there's a really great mobile app, but there's no Linux application. So it's got a nice JSON-based API, but the web security model doesn't allow you to access that API directly from a web browser. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking advantage of Electron and our web development skill set in order to build a controller for that light. Let's dive in. So I have started off here by cloning the repository. And what this does is this actually gives me a project that has the webpack configuration, it's got the TypeScript configuration, it's got the Electron configuration, everything I need in order to get started building out an application that bridges the two worlds of the client side and the server side with Node. And so the magic here is that when I take a look at this, it looks like a normal Angular app, right? You've got your source app folder, you've got components and modules, but it's got this special folder called core. And if you look inside core, you have a core service where this code actually is able to hook into the server. And so this is a service that is able to trigger things like window.process or window.require in the server layer and actually access my file system, actually access node APIs instead of just web browser APIs. And so uh, I'm going to install all the dependencies here now that I've cloned it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start building out. First, let's build some really, really simple UX. And so let's go into our app component and let's build out a couple of features. So let's first imagine that we want to be able to turn off our light and then maybe on our light. And what we'll do is we will just pass this through all the way to our service. So we're going to say electron service dot send zero and this dot electron service dot send one. Now obviously send does not actually exist, so we need to go to the electron service and implement that. So this is just a normal Angular service, but it's got some superpowers which we'll take a look at in a second. All right, so we've got this, uh, it needs a return type. Let's just call it void. All right, so that should give us enough of a component. Now we can actually jump into the HTML and let's get rid of the router outlet because we're not actually gonna be using it in this very, very simple application. And I'm gonna make two buttons. I'm gonna make an on button and I'm gonna make an off button. And then correspondingly, we'll have some click handlers. So we'll say on and we will say off for the other one. Perfect. All right. So now uh, if we run the appropriate yarn serve command for the Electron Angular application, which I believe is just yarn serve, if you don't know what it is, you can actually always check and see in the package.json what scripts there are. And so what I think we want here is yarn start. All right. It looks like it's going to be uh, spinning up an Angular application, spinning up an Electron app in serve mode. So this will take a little bit of extra time because it's doing the IV compilation behind the scenes and spinning up Electron. But what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be actually building out our service a little bit. So we, we built this send method. Now within the way that this controller works is it really just needs a simple put request to the right IP address. And so it's actually pretty easy for us to do this, but we can't use Angular's HTTP client. We can't use the uh, web native fetch, we actually need to be using the HTTP client from Node. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna import Node, Node's HTTP features. Uh, Node, I'm not pulling in HTTPS because it, it actually is an HTTP uh, protocol here, it's unsecured. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say this.http equals window.require HTTP. And this is the magic here. So this little command, uh, once we've defined HTTP, is now going to give us this HTTP access. So anything I call in send, which is just an Angular service, is able to make native calls at the node layer. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in a, just a second, just to show you what happened here. So uh, the application came up 
and it looks like we had maybe a minor issue in our template. Yep, we, there we go. Uh, so this is very nice, just running yarn start will give you this live edit, refresh, reflow, and our application will keep staying up to date. And so, all right, so let's go ahead and build out this API. So what we're gonna need is we're going to need to send a command. So this is the data that is expected by the light. So I'm gonna say const command equals, and we're just gonna use some JSON here, number of lights, and that's gonna be one because we're only controlling one light right now. We've got lights, which is an array, and on, which is gonna be set to our value. Perfect, I think that looks right for our command. And now what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to to configure the HTTP request because this is the API surface of the Node.js, this.http. And we're gonna say const options equals, and this is gonna be an array that has a host name. So this is just gonna be the local IP address of my light, the port that the light is expecting to hear from us on, the path that we're hitting in the back end here. So it's gonna be slash Elgato slash lights. The method is gonna be put, and we're gonna to need to send a couple headers. So the first headers we're gonna to need to send is content type. So we'll just say content type goes to application slash JSON. And then we're gonna want the content dash length. Now this one is going to be uh, the, the length of our command. And what I'm gonna do to save myself from having to uh, restringify this, I'm just gonna say dot uh, stringify. So instead of having out a JSON object, we're just gonna have a string because that's what is expected, I believe. All right, there we go. So now we can just say the content length is gonna be command.length. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create an HTTP request using the node HTTP library. So the way that you do this is you're gonna say, you're gonna save a copy of the request and you're gonna say this.http.request and it's gonna take your options object and then it's gonna have a callback for your response. And what we're gonna do is when we get the response, whenever it sends data, well, let's just go ahead and console.log. So we don't actually care about this right now. And then let's go ahead and say rec.on error. So if our request errors out, let's just send, pass that over to console.error to handle that. And the most important part here is rec.write. So this is where we're actually gonna be putting data into that uh, HTTP request. So what we're gonna do here is we're basically gonna just send command. Pretty simple, and then we're gonna say rec.end so that it knows that the request should go out. Uh, and that should be it. I think with this, what we've done is we've now imported the HTTP uh, Node.js feature in our Angular service. We're making use of it in this method called send, and then we've exposed it in our API, or exposed this in our client-side application by these two buttons that call out into the, um, these are just gonna, both gonna be void here. They've got some strict typings in this seed, which is a little bit annoying, but it's it can be helpful in the long run. So let's go ahead and take a look at our application. So we have our on-off buttons here. Let's see if we can zoom in. Control shift plus, here we go. We have our on-off buttons and we should be able to watch on the network. And at the same time, if we are watching the video, so you just pull my camera here. If we send off, we see that my camera has just turned off. We have now successfully built an Angular application that is able to take advantage of Node.js APIs because we are shipping this as a browser application. So as a final treat, what I wanna do is I wanna actually build this as a application that will run natively on my desktop and that you could do the exact same thing um, on any platform that you want. And so what we're gonna do is instead of running this yarn start command, we're gonna go ahead and run the builder command. So the builder command is, is relatively simple. So we'll just say yarn electron build. Let's do this, let's do the Webpack compilation, we'll do the Angular compilation, and it will assemble it all as a binary that is appropriate for my computer, which is exactly what I need. Obviously, you could be doing a lot more to configure this. If you are curious about how the configuration works, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to find the main.ts file. This is where it sets up the window, it sets all the flags and options on the window, it sets the size of the window, all those sorts of things. Um, 
handles, what happens when you load it, what happens when you close it, all those sorts of things. That is all up to you to configure as much as you want. But I'm just taking a very, very simple application, and I just want a binary I can run, give me a nice little UI that controls my little light. All right, looks like that is done. So we should be able to see a release folder. And in this release folder, we're going to see our app image, which is what's appropriate for Linux here. And I can now just execute this. And let's switch back my video. Oops. And we can see we have our on off buttons. Let's hit on. Let's zoom in first. So this is an Angular application. I can resize it. It's got Electron, it's got desktop features. I can debug it if I want to. But the most important thing for me as user is on and off. I have now combined the power of Angular plus Electron in order to make my life better and to solve a problem and build an interface for my IoT devices that I couldn't have done with the web alone. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.